It's a typical weekday afternoon at London Weekend Television on the South Bank in London. One of the country's most popular chat daytime programs, today with Des and Mel, is getting ready for transmission. Today's star guest is Russell Watson, the 38-year-old multi-million selling opera singer. Hi, how are you? Good to see you again. How's it going? Hi, good. For Russell, television appearances and meeting the rich and famous are just part of his normal day-to-day -day life, but it still takes him aback. I'm still amazed by some of the things that I've achieved in the past four or five years. I mean, who would have imagined that some guy who was sticking nuts and bolts in a lathe in a factory, you know, ten or so years ago, would be sat round a, a dining table um, with Prince Charles, while Camilla on the opposite side of the table is explaining to, to, to him how she loves his music and, and has all his CDs. And then a couple of years before, the private concert at the Vatican for the Pope, and I kissed his ring, you know, the papal ring. Russell's surprise at his own achievements is understandable. When he first started working in the suburbs of Manchester, his only concerns were to hold down a job and have enough money for a few drinks with his mates down the pub. But Russell has now gone on to be one of the top-selling opera singers in the world. His albums have gone double platinum, he's spent a record-breaking 52 weeks at number one, he's conquered America, and he's picked up numerous awards along the way. And the reason for all that success? A voice that's been called a gift from God. So there'll be an introduction, and then there'll be applause, applause, applause. Yay! Russell has come a long way in his working life. Now he has a management team that look after his every need. Lisa takes care of his diary and engagements. Lisa, have we got any more backing tracks? Is there something wrong with us? All of them. Every single one. Okay, I'll go and get it. Dave is Russell's sound man and looks after the voice. You stressed out. I'm not fine. You seem a bit stressed out. You are, aren't you? I'm absolutely fine. I'm absolutely fine. Russell, can we and for the last year, Deke Arlon has been at the forefront of his business affairs. A manager's job is, is, is many things. It's to help choose the right material, it's to have a, a road map for the next five years and try and plan out where the artist wants to be. It's a bit of a kind of, um, you know, uh, a fatherly job, as it were, the way I do it now, and at my age it has to be. Hang on, business is calling. When you're a manager, you're always on the phone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello, Jean-Pierre. But Russell hasn't always had staff working for him. My favourite cheese. Brie. The story begins almost 40 years ago here in Earlham, a small suburb in the south of Manchester. Just like any, you know, I think it was kind of a stereotypical sort of Salford lads upbringing, really, you know. There was no hairs and graces, and my main passions were, as would be expected, football and action men. In the middle of Erlam on the high street is this DIY shop, and inside, serving behind the counter, in amongst the nails and drill parts is Tim Watson, Russell's dad. Russell's definitely a local celebrity around here. Get lots of people coming in the shop asking when his album's out, when he's on telly, what's he doing now, do I see him much? I don't see him enough, <laughs> definitely. He's too busy. Tim Watson had no inkling that his son possessed an extraordinary voice. It had never occurred to his family to give Russell any lessons or classes in singing. No, there's no background of that in my family. <laughs> Dad used to work in an office and my mum was just at home, housewife.
no idea where he got that from at all. It's just a gift he's been given, a great gift. Russell's teenage years were spent here at Erlam High School. He was not interested in academic studies, and at 16, he quit. I left school with no qualifications. I got one GCSE grade one in English. That's it. Most of my time was spent in school trying to impress the other pupils by mimicking the teachers and the celebrities of, you know, that particular time. Um, what were they like at school? Did he go to school? <laughs> he didn't leave school with any qualifications at all. Just went straight to, uh, must have gone to Sabre. Left school and went to Sabre. Doing his nuts and bolts and turning on lathes. With no qualifications, Russell's options were limited and he went to work in a factory. But of course, um, <laughs> I, I really wasn't that interested in the job, I have to say. And uh, again, I think the only reason that the foreman kept me employed there was because I kept the other people in the factory amused. So as you can see, my life from kind of the age of four or five when I started school, right through to me starting my first job in a factory, had not particularly been taken that seriously. At 19, Russell wasn't thinking about his future. As far as he was concerned, his job brought in a bit of cash, and that was good enough. I didn't really have dreams or aspirations, to be honest with you, at that particular point. I went to work, earned my money, and went out with my friends at the weekend, you know, and had a few drinks, and that was it. That was really all I was interested in. I wasn't thinking, oh, no, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in this environment. I don't want to spend the rest of my life in a factory. Just got up each morning and went to work, and that was it. But after a year or so of this routine, a karaoke contest at the Railway Inn was to have a dramatic impact. You wouldn't think to look at it now, but this was where it all started for Russell. I went out this particular evening and a few friends said, oh, go on, get up, there's a competition in a local pub. Kind of talent competition, karaoke talent competition. So I said, yeah, OK then, I'll give it a go. And I got up on the stage and I sang uh, Neil Diamond's Love on the Rocks. And I won that evening's heat. I went through to the semi-finals, won the semi-finals, then through into the final, and all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, hey, I'm a singer. The night Russell won the competition, a local booking agent approached him about singing in a few of the clubs around the northwest. Russell had only been singing for four weeks, the time between his first performance at the Railway Inn and winning the competition, but he decided to take an enormous gamble. He said, I think I can get you three or four bookings a week and this is the amount of money I can get you, would you be interested? I said, yeah. And that was it. I did what I've always done. And the next day I walked into work and I said to the boss, that's it, I'm leaving. What are you going to do? I'm going to be a singer. And uh, that was the beginning of a very long journey in club 